Kim was a very solitary person. She just more or less liked to, to do her own thing. It was really nice that way. You know, it was not that we ha had to go out or do stuff. She was more of a homebody, which fit me very well. Um, she uh, did a lot more work than I would have really wanted to do here. Kind of nice that way. She uh, kept me on my toes. She was more comfortable with a power tool than with a computer. She would uh, take care of of me as well as I, me taking care of her even though she was sick. She liked to, uh, to make sure I was happy even though I was the one trying to make her happy. We got together on uh, July 26th of 2009 and we found out she had cancer two and a half weeks later in August. Um, that, that was a very hard day. You know, we, that was like a Thursday. We got the pathology report on the Monday. We saw Dr. Um, Levine on the Tuesday, and she started uh, chemotherapy on the Friday, and it was just really quick. We had no real time to process what was going on. It was just, here you go. We found out about the outreach or hospice when Kim was, was told, sorry, your end of life is coming up. Um, there's not much we, more we can do with the cancer drugs. Um, so we got uh, we heard from Candace Wells. She, you know, was brought on, and then we heard from um, Cheryl and Dr. McNeil and Shelley, and all of a sudden it was, you know, these people were coming in to, to help us out, and it was, you know, this, whoa, hey, we've got like six people now coming, whereas we used to go see, you know, just one doctor and a nurse. So it was, it was nice to know that we had that support team then, and and know that it doesn't matter if it's two in the morning or two in the afternoon, that they were gonna be around to help us. Even after Kim passed, they were still there to help um, support me uh, through that initial grieving stage. I'm Patty Hurley and I'm a nurse that helped Kim on her journey at home um, through her breast cancer and I met her in January of uh, 2010. We ended up really, really reaching a great relationship together. She was extremely private, extremely proud. She, ha she knew how to draw the fine line between um, how much can I research this and fight this and how many um, referrals should I get um, to the point of, okay, I need to step back now you know, my life is slipping away and I do need to spend really quality time with the people I love. If we can divert somebody from the hospital and do their care at home, it saves them the wait time, unnecessary tests, and you know, we know what they're dealing with, we can focus. Pain management issues are the primary dealings. So when Shelley said, you know, we're going to have to come to a point where we're going to have to give us some injections, are you going to be comfortable with this? I said, yeah, if it's for my wife, I'll do anything. Um, so Shelly went through and showed me how this is going to work and then, you know, Patty came in and said, okay, this is, you know, we're going to have to do this. So she showed me again and, and made it very comfortable for me to be able to help give her those, those injections. She was so brave and so strong and she kept that smile up and, you know, just admiring her for the strength that she, she did have. They also told me right from the beginning, you know, this is what's going to happen. These are the things that you're going to need to be aware of. Um, you know, as her life starts to leave her, you're going to notice these changes. And they went through all that with me um, to prepare me to know that this is going to happen and, and not to be afraid. She felt if she went into a hospital, she'd never come out. So it was nice to, to know that we could stay at home and have the support come to us.